Hi, um, my name is Choma Chukuka. I'm an actor, I'm a producer, generally a filmmaker from Nigeria. So um, that's what I do. <laughs> Hi, my name is AY. Uh, I'm a stand up comedian, movie maker, and a movie, I mean, movie producer. And of course, we are here to have fun. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name is Iniedo. I'm an actress and I'm a filmmaker from Nigeria, of course. Well, the movie Al Majuri. Uh, Al Majuri uh, talks about the, the story of um, the very selected, rejected few from the northern part of Nigeria, where, whereby these children, they are exposed to a certain kind of life that affects them even without knowing it from growing up. And people begin to see them on the streets and they, they are used as beggars. And at the end of the day, forced into some form of child labor, uh, sexual harassment, abuse, and what have you all put together. So Marjorie tells that story. And uh, of course, uh, the inspiration came as a result of me always driving on the street and I see these children begging. And I made a decision to engage a few of them to find out what their story, you know, where at the time. And um, it got so interesting to the fact that I needed to make a movie out of it. It was well researched. And as a matter of fact, I engaged with people who grew up as kids on the street from the north who suffered the Amagiri Act. Now, let me, let me rephrase this. Amagiri, in a way, is supposed to be a sect where you train children, where you can even deposit children too, especially children who don't have any form of support uh, from their parents or, you know, and then without understanding what transpires even after that has been done, you know, to these kids. So, I mean, uh, engaging with these children and with a few people who are grown up today who look back and say, this was our story and all of this happened to us was good enough to translate into a movie. And uh, as a matter of fact, a lot of Nigerians right now very very excited about this story in particular because nobody you know has come up to talk about it to 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 make people know about it. maybe they're afraid of the government or they're afraid of something but it was something i just made a decision that if a story that is worth telling if a story that is worth hearing i mean it's something that calls for that um that critical uh, approach whereby people should just know that this is what is going on with these kids. And so far, so good uh, as a movie, it's, uh, it has given us some good laurels. I mean, in Canada, it's catered away with about 14 awards, and uh, the Best of Nollywood Awards, it uh, catered away with about seven awards. And right now, uh, we are here. It was a closing film at Afrif, and by extension, Afrif brought. Uh, Amajiri to uh, Jeddah today. Amajiri is a social, comes with a social message. And then I was already getting tired of being stereotyped as a comedian who does, who, who make comedy films uh, back home. I've done quite a number from 30 Days in Atlanta that made the Guinness Book of World Records uh, to a trip uh, to Jamaica, box office movie, and from there we did 10 days in Sun City. So I was getting tired. I did Merry Men. So I was being boxed to believe that, okay, this guy is just all about comedy. So I needed to just prove a point. And the imaginary story was a good, serious social uh, uh, issue, dealing with social issues to, you know, put out there for people to know that, yes, even as a comedian, we can do something different. I can do something different. And as a matter of fact, we see the results. It's even taking me places more than the comedy that I even do. First of all, I was going to say, I already said how proud of you I am. <laughs> I mean, just thinking of, just listening to you and just really thinking back at all the kinds of films that you've done and how you're evolving 
it's just really inspiring. Just if I've never said it, let me say it on tape today. Thank I'm really you. proud of you. Is we are proud of him. I mean, this it's, it doesn't get any better. Anyway, so uh, I've already said my name is Iniedo, and um, I'm a filmmaker as well. I've been making films since uh, well, I've been in the industry for over twenty years, a little over twenty years. I started as a teenager, so. Um, and of course, I have over 150 films to so 200 films to my credit uh, that I've, I've filmed in. And as a filmmaker, we just, there's an evolving industry. As an evolving industry, um, people like AY has inspired us to go into filmmaking, telling the kinds of stories that we want to be told. So um, I started making my own films two years ago. I have, um, well, I've done a couple of other films, but like I need to talk, this is the one, these are the ones I like to talk about because it's a very, uh, it's yet to come out. It's coming on Netflix by January, hopefully. Uh, January, yes, should be out by January. And it's a limited series, a six episode limited series called Shanty Town. It's a film that deals with a lot of, um, that deals with the society, deals with the slums. It tells the story of the dejected, how the politicians uh, manipulate people into, you know, into doing their bidding, and you know, it touches uh, uh, women trafficking. It just borders on a lot of social issues and ills, and um, you know, as as the case is, we're already having a second season in the making, and then I did another one called. Um, my big fairy tale wedding that bothers on women of a certain age who are struggling to get married, the desperation of getting married, the pressure on the society on them to get married, and how uh, certain three women navigate their ways through life and through you know the pressures the society puts on women to get married and stay married. So these are really interesting topics that we try to bring to life because um, the best way that we can sell our story is through films, through movies. And we have such interesting stories and such interesting lifestyles and society, societal problems that we keep, we're using movies to address. So basically for us as filmmakers, that's really where the concern or that's where the focus is in using these stories to bring light, to shed light on the issues that we are dealing with, the issues that perhaps the government is not looking into, look, you know, exposing things that people are naturally afraid to talk about. So through our films, we bring these stories to life and basically, that's just what we do as filmmakers. Storytelling is, has become second nature to me because um, I'm so passionate about so many social ills that need to be you know, out there for people to know. Nigeria is such a dynamic country that we all know quote unquote, what needs to be done but isn't done, nobody's talking about it. But I find out that because we have a passion of telling stories, we kind of bring those social ills to the limelight and for people to say, oh, this is happening, or this is not happening, or this is how Africa is, this is not how Africa is. We have the tool, we have the power <clears throat> to correct a lot of things and that's where I think the Nigerian film industry is now. We've gone beyond telling regular stories and all of that. I would, I would, I'll come from his angle. I, I've seen Al Majiri, the film, and I was so shocked. I, I sat down glued. It was a closing film for Afrif, and I was like, oh, this is the first film of AY that you know will stick in my memory for a very long time. And for as a filmmaker saying that, I know it will be the same for everyone watching it. Um, it's such a powerful story because I, I, I was privy to conversations that you know that people had concerning the film and how much pain they went through shooting that film it was you shot it for like three years or so mm -hmm. pre-covid mm -hmm. and yeah. it's just wow. being released so there were times they feared for their own lives so um i'm saying if it was a regular person you, you just say the story and people won't really hear but because we have the tool as filmmakers we bring those stories out there for people to see and then probably, you know, um, address. address it and shed and bring help mm -hmm. from wherever um, we get. It. I've been a filmmaker for over 20 years and um, I have so many works in the pipeline as we speak. Um, I, I love. No, I won't talk about them right <laughs> now because, um, you know, non disclosure, I'm not supposed to talk about them now. Uh, for now, 
So um, I have um, too many films to my credit. I can't list them all, but I am so proud of my journey and I am happy that I am part of the movement now in in the Nigerian film industry is is such a thing that we get the opportunity to tell our story ourselves because foreigners can't tell your story better than you know the indigenous the person who's feeling you know the where the where the shoe pinches do you understand so um i love that there's light coming and is is being shown on every single part of Africa that needs that light. And Nigeria is driving. I'm so proud that <laughs> to say that Nigeria is a driving force. Mm. Like, if you want, if you're coming to make a film in Africa, you'll be like, okay, where do I go first? Even if you're not coming at the moment, you'll be like, okay, Nigeria is on your mind. Nollywood is on your mind. We have to go to Nollywood. We have to hear them. We have to see what's do um, what they're doing. And so I'm proud to be in the moment. Sorry. No, no, we're, we're gonna, you're going to take a back seat right now. <laughs> so um, 10, 15 years ago, there weren't a lot of women making films. making films, producers, directors. I direct as well. There weren't a lot of women in that. It was, it was like, you know, there was a glass ceiling. Like if you try to push through, you're not able to do it because, oh, you're a woman. But now, Afrif, the convener of Afrif, Africa Film, Africa... International Film Festival is a woman. African Movie Academy Awards is a woman. Most of them are majorly, Ebony Life Films is a woman. So we're now at the top. We're like, okay, it's no longer the case of, oh, what, what's, what's she doing? How can she do it? It's a case of what next? You know, we've been able to break that barrier. We've been able to say to the world that we can, what a man can do, we can strive to do even better, you know. Well, a story, a stories are uh, more passionate. I'm sorry. No, no, don't apologize. <laughs> no, apologize. No, 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 our stories are more passionate because you know the women. We feel we feel the pain. We we we're the ones with the blood canal. We feel the pain more. Whatever social ill we're trying to bring out, if it's the um, Al Majuri story, we are the ones that have the children. We're the ones that birth them. We're the ones that want to see them grow. But we're the ones that you know, cry when their lives are cut short, where the ones that bear all the pain. Likewise, if the child doesn't do well or if anything happens, it's the women that take all the, the blame, you know. But I'm so glad that we're able to, you know, cut across so many barriers that had us, you know, behind closed doors years so, back. So, if I have to, let me help. Yeah. So I, I would say this without even apologizing, that women in Nigeria <laughs> are the leading forces in the industry as we speak. There are likes of AY, so many of them doing great, well. amazing things. But the women are really taking a lot of chances. They're breaking barriers. barriers yeah. They're bringing innovations. They're daring to go where the men sometimes don't want to go. The women in Nigeria are killing it. In the industry. I'm, I'm going to co concur, but right, then yeah. it's good I also say this. Okay, there has uh, to be a balance. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes uh, you also need that s supporting factor, that force that will help you. Because you can't treat me that Wait, wait a minute. Wait, just hold on a second. I'm, I'm happy. I'm very proud to sit here and say two of the women who are leading forces mm -hmm. right now in the industry, two of them came to me when they wanted to start off. <laughs> How do you do it? Okay. So we should give kudos to the man who would say that's, that. That's what I'm trying this to say. This is what I do, yeah, and this is how I do it. We're, we're, and then we're, we're not have, leaving. We're not leaving. Nobody guys can out. take we're your flowers. Just <laughs> to say that. Nobody can take no, your no, flowers. Yeah. I, know, I just want you to say because I'm the no, middle no, no. of women now. We're I'm just, just trying to say that we now, we now, we now have. Nobody can take your flowers. We now have. We now know the way. We do. We we now know how to do it just the way it needs to be done. I think women are just better. more passionate. Beyond uh, man-woman <laughs> argument, emancipation, and what have you, uh, as an industry, collectively, we're doing well in Nollywood. And for that reason, we're beginning to gain attention. The world is beginning to notice us to the point where the fight to want to have a space around our marketplace. 
you know, from the likes of uh, Netflix to Amazon, Disney is coming, quite a number of them. Paramount is here. Yeah. I'd like to chip in something. Yeah. They have seen that we have the numbers. They have seen we're driving, I mean, from the three markets, the Hollywood, Bollywood, Nollywood, they have seen that Nollywood has something an untapped, something untapped that they they know that if they tap it, if they're able to, you know, just the tip of the iceberg, will probably be the be number one in the world in terms of, you know, um, quality, quantity, um, passion, focus, and then um, where we have the talent, we, we, we have, have the talent, the raw talent, raw stories, and. I mean, and one of the one, one of the beautiful things that you see from Nollywood that I will tell you today, uh, there are no basis for comparison at the moment. We don't want to compare ourselves with Hollywood, Hollywood yeah. at the moment because we don't even deal with equal budgets mm -mm. in terms of making films. Yes. Some of the films that you see in all these festivals that excites you that comes from Nollywood, some of these movies are produced by individuals. From the from scratch, not with any studios. not mm -hmm. studios where they have all the Forest. budget and what have you. I tell you what, we could shoot a scene this minute and be like, okay, we're running out of light, and then the producer doesn't want to spend any extra money. We're just gonna make do with what we get, mm -hmm. so that we'll just get that production going. Mm -hmm. But I mean, in Hollywood, you can shut that scene down. You can close the set for another one week, ask everybody to regroup yes. and come back because you have, but the what we budget. have now mm -hmm. is, uh, what, we, what we have going for us now is self-effort. So you can imagine when that collaborative spirit comes in, when that collaboration how, how comes it's in, it's, it's going to be huge, it's going to be big, bigger than what we have now. Mm -hmm. As an individual, I've been able to, you know, put a film together where I'll say, okay, I need a Vivica Fox to be in my film, and I will work that out to have that collaboration. I've had the one with Lynn Wilfield, I've had with John Amos. This is me as an individual. But just imagine where the budget is, I mean, when we have the budget there, and then when we have the studios coming in to say that, yeah. yes, this Africa market that we're looking to key in and then put the money in there, Nollywood will take over. <laughs> it's the truth because, so first of all, I think one of the major things we have in Nigeria that these people, are, I think, that would attract them is our stories. We have really raw, untapped stories that sometimes you find them take these films and ship them in other countries. Most of it, most of them are our stories. Some of them are our stories. We have untapped stories. We have so many stories. I think people are just really getting to warm up to the idea of the African, the true African story, the true African spirit. And I'm not even talking about that talent. We have what we call the raw, raw talent in Nigeria. You need to see Nigerian films and the quality of acting that you yeah. find. And most of these people don't even have, of, don't even have any sort of trainings. They don't, most times we don't even get the to self do rehearsals. Thoughts, yeah. Most times we don't get to rehearse. Most times we just go straight to sets. We just do auditions and go. Yet we're able to put up that level of performance. So like what he's saying is everything that we do are like really from out of pocket of every individual. So there's passion to make these films and bring these stories to life. And this cuts across, sorry, this cuts across every um, sector of filmmaking. Producers, directors, oh. writers, you know, camera every every everyone the crew members not just the actors with the mm -hmm. talent we have if i'm permitted to use the word badass writers in mm -hmm. nigeria i mean they come up with stories just give them an idea just give them a scene and before you know it they come up with stories that like oh wow this happened really this this is possible yeah locations we have the locations because uh i mean it's africa it's nigeria mm -hmm. You know, you want to do, you know, most times you don't have to even build the sets because we have the original yeah. locations. Just we, right we, have, we have the high we brow, have the lands, we have the mid, we have, we have the very low, um, whatever, you know, the lowest of the lowest. We have all of them. So, but when people, most people think of um, Africa, they think, oh, no, there are no high brow areas. We have, we have, it's just, you know, get, we, we live in caves and all of that. Cave, no. Yeah. There are some areas that you will see in Nigeria that you're like, is this Nigeria? Mm -hmm. And that's what filmmaking has done. Um, I shot a film last year 
it's called Single Not Searching. It was a collaboration done with um, um, black actors in America and some Ghanaian actors and Nigerian actors as well. So the three three of us came together and we made a film. And when we went to premiere in um, Atlanta, I had some people say, oh, is, this, is this Ghana? Is this Nigeria? Are you serious? So those things, we have those things. We just need the push. We just need people to come and say, oh, this is this, this is here. Let's, why, why do, do we have to build a set? No, we don't have to build a set. You just, you know, fine tune. And we have the numbers. And we have the numbers. And above all, there's something that the entire world must take home. In as much as they believe they have their own industry, I want them to know that Nigeria, Africa is blessed with different talented human resources. Yes. Oh, so gosh. you'll find, so they have the deadline now to, to come to Africa. <laughs> <laughs> the whole world is evolving. The entire world is evolving. It's just really nice to see that um, a place like, I mean, we know what it is, what it represents religiously. You know what I mean? We know the restraints and the constraints and the conservativeness of this place. To see them open up this much, to even accepting people of different, from all over the world, coming, allowing you to dress the way that you like to dress. It's, it just means that the world is really evolving, you know. Um, every, I think that the world is also trying to catch, people from every part of it is trying to catch up with how evolving the world is. You don't want to still live in the dark ages. We are now in 2022, and everything, technology, of course, and um, education and all of these things are just really, so it's just really, for me, it's really pleasant to see that there's this level, I was a little worried when I, I was asked to come here because I didn't know what to expect. I mean, we've heard stories, we've watched things in the news. So, but the level of, I, I didn't see that level of, of control that I was expecting to see. So like to a point where we can dress this way. And I mean, it's very refreshing. It's just showing that even the most strict part or the most, con con um, how would I put it? Conservative. Conservative parts of the world are catching up with how the world should actually really be a more a more liberal place where everybody can can have access to equal access to everything and just you know entertainment education and everything so it's for me it's quite a, a something big to take home well i i would say that uh, we are so far so good we've been enjoying the the cultural balance yes in in, in the sense that uh, we saw some of them came for uh, our own festival in Nigeria, mm -hmm. they were able to, you know, enjoy our culture and uh, see the things that we have and how things are done there. So coming here and creating that aesthetic balance and also knowing that they are more open to, you know, the, the global uh, perception and what have you is also very, very important. It's something that I'm enjoying. I, I just can't wait to just step out and <laughs> see even more. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so basically, for me, it's how um, accepting they are now. When I when I say accepting, I mean you know how the world has evolved. People dress differently from the way you dress. It doesn't change who you are. You're like okay, you're accepting them for who they are. You're bringing them in like we are one. It mm -hmm. is just. The skin color, nothing different, you know. We can, if this is um, what we want to do, if filmmaking is what we want to do, we have to accept the world for what it is. I like the theme of this year's um, Red Sea um, festival. festival. It's called Film Making is Everything, right? So, I mean, it's everything. The good, the bad, the ugly, everything. Let's just go get, get on with it, you know. Um, it doesn't restrict... Um, it's not restricting, it doesn't change who you are. You're just telling your stories and accepting other people's stories for what, what it is. is, you know. So that's that's my take home for this. And I wasn't really worried because this is my first time in Jeddah, but I've been to the, I've been to the UAE and I know that they're liberal and they're welcoming. They still keep their essence, nothing is lost. But I was like, okay. Their neighbors, their brothers and sisters, so it has to be, be the, the same. same. And uh, I wasn't disappointed. So let's just round up and say <laughs> coming to Jeddah is everything. Yes. yes.